Okay, I'm Larry King and I've been asked to give a little history of Springville here uh, to help Daniel Baker with his Eagle Project. And I'm going to start out here from the very first start of Springville. John Gray has been noted to be the first settler in Springville. Uh, he was also thought to be the first settler in Lawrence County. John Gray filed a claim in the land office in Vincennes in 1817. So he actually uh, started shortly after he got here in the Springville area. Springville was planted in 1832. Uh, Springville is thought to be the third oldest town in Lawrence County, and that is behind um, Leesville and Bono, and so it's thought to be the third town here. The road leading from the gym toward Harrisburg was known as Widow Woman's Road, and this was because there were so many soldiers in the Civil War killed that lived on this street. Also, at the same time, at the start of the Civil War, there was some bank. There was a bank organized in Springville, and the bank was organized to take care of the widows of the not the widows, but the wives of the soldiers in the Civil War, and that's the reason it was started actually in the, in, the, in Springville that time. This here is a picture of the steel, stone, steel bridge that was in Springville that the truck fell through. And this was 1952 when this fell through. And so this is a, uh, probably from the looks of the car in the background, it's gonna be around the 1950 picture here. This is approximately 1950 and it shows it. Uh, then there was a, a narrow concrete bridge built there. And this concrete bridge was used until approximately two or three years ago. And so it's, uh, they widened it out and made a much better bridge there now. But uh, 1952 is when it actually collapsed. Uh, 1953, there was another big uh, event in the Springville area. The Springville Feeder Auction Association was uh, organized. And uh, it is still active today. And at one time, Lawrence County was known as the most beef producing county in the state. And I'm sure that Springville had a big area that was enlarged in this. Okay, move on to our post office at this time. Uh, our current post office that we have today and we use today was dedicated July the 21st, 1968. And there was a little ceremony that they had there that day for the opening of it. Uh, Harry Armstrong, which a lot of people will remember around here, he was the MC of that program that day. He did all of the, took care of the program that day. The local Boy Scouts help, also helped with the program that day because they took care of all of the flag ceremonies and everything for the ceremony to help with the, uh, with the. Perry Township Volunteer Fire Department, it was started in 1967. Uh, started with a person by the name of Paris McCarter who was there with them to really help get things started and Paris really spent a lot of time in it and I think it's been named kind of after Paris McCarter now. Uh, it has really grown through the years. Uh, the Volunteer Fire Department started sponsoring the local Boy Scout troop in 1986, and they have sponsored the troop now for up to this year, which is uh, 14, what, 13, 27 years. And uh, so uh, that's how long the Perry Township Volunteer Fire Department has been sponsoring the Boy Scouts. Okay, I thought that I might mention uh, uh, at least a church. So I picked the Springville United Methodist Church. The United Methodist Church is the oldest active church and with, that was still started in Springville and still being used today. It's the oldest active one. Uh, Springville Methodist Church held their first meeting in there in 1822. So as you see, this was uh, 10 years before Springville was planted, so they've been around a long time there. Um, the first meeting in the schools uh, the church they met in the schools which was called the Acton's School and they met uh, the church met in the Acton School there for many years uh, and in 1838 they built a brick, brick, brick structure and it was uh, served there and I, I read where it was a very nice structure but in uh, 1868 there was a fire in the, church, in the building and it burned the church on Easter Sunday morning of all of the, of all the money to the fire to that. Okay, there was a new structure built. It was made out of wood in 1874. 
and this uh, structure stood until 1922. Uh, and in 1922, another disaster came to the church. There was an extremely strong windstorm, and it actually blew the church down. And we have some pictures around uh, of the church, and it just actually flattened it. Everything was just laying flat on the ground at the time. It actually flattened it. Uh, today's church building, the standing today, was built in 1924. Down through the years, uh, that church has been used many, many years. It's been active since that time, still active today. Uh, it turned out to be a nice building. It's lasted for a long time. Uh, many people went to this church uh, for many, many years, and a lot of the people that was in the Springville area attended this church. And one of those people that attended this church was a lady by the name of Verna Armstrong. Uh, Verna was a descendant of John Gray, the, for one of the first settlers here. She was uh, from that family. Uh, she attended this church for many, many years. Very influential person. She was the type of person that could uh, draw the young, youth in. She was very good at drawing the youth in. Many, many uh, people today was the youth in that church at that time, and they really, uh, they really thought a lot of Vernie. Uh, I came to Springville as an adult, and I didn't get acquainted till Vernie till I came here. But uh, Vernie was been one of the most influential people in my life, and Vernie was always saying things that you that stayed with you that you remember. And one thing that Bernie was always noted for saying, and I guess she said this many years before I heard her say that, but her statement was, never lay anything on the Bible. Anytime there's a Bible around, you never stack anything on the Bible. And this is one thing that she's always noted for it. I've heard other people say that. I've heard her say this. I've heard many other people say this, that never, never put anything on the Bible. I'm going to stack. Um, Bernie was 93 years young when she died, 1987. So she lived a long life and she was really very influential with a lot of people. Railroad in Springville was started in 1874 is when it actually started. It was an arrow gauge railroad. Uh, people around Springville, there's many, many stories about what happened as they rebuilt the radio the railroad and things like that. Uh, but the narrow gauge railroad was called the BSOB. That's the Bedford Springville Owensburg Bluefield Railroad. And it, it ended up with three or four names, but this was one of the first original names that it was given. Uh, it was changed to a, a standard gauge railroad in the 1890s. Uh, the railroad was used on a limited basis. It was uh, kind of in financial problems a lot of the time it was owned, and they shifted owners several times during this time. But it was 1935 is when the official closing of the railroad was. And the company says there is no railroad through Springville anymore. Okay, we're going to move on to the schools in Springville now. Uh, schools in Springville. Um, the Corvella House of today, which is located by Spring Creek just across from the gymnasium, was used as a school from 1877 to 1926. Used many, many years there. Springville's first graduating class was in 1910. They had other graduating classes before that, but it was a two-year graduating class or something like that. But the first four-year graduating class actually happened in 1910. The Gun Mansion, which is uh, what became the school, uh, Gun Mansion became a school in 1926. The uh, house where Corvellas were, that school closed in 1926, and in the fall, the Gun Mansion became a schoolhouse at that time, and they started in 1926. I mentioned that the stone wall that you see in front of the school, uh, of the gymnasium today, this was actually built to help the flood waters to come through Springville. Many flood waters used to come through Springville, and this was actually built to help, the stone wall was built to actually help keep part of the water out of it, the gun mansion. Uh, Springville was also noted for, for basketball. Uh, several teams uh, here, and, and you look back over the schedule, they won several games. Now, in 1941 and 1942, Springville won the county basketball championships two years in a row and they were actually uh, coached by a person by the name of Alonzo Bill Luce and Bill Luce actually became a coach later at Olytic High School then he moved on to help at Bedford High School and then when they started Bedford North Lawrence he was in the administrative uh, for Bedford North Lawrence Corporation 
and he was there many, many years. Uh, the last high school graduating class was in 1942 in Springville. That was the last high school graduating class. Uh, students then went to Old Lytic High School and Springville remained a, a grade one through eight at that time. Okay, uh, here's a picture uh, of Springville uh, students and it's about 1952, I believe it is, around 1952. Many of the people is in here, uh, one of them I think is on the edge, right over here, this last person over here dead, is Lane Reynolds, and many people know Lane Reynolds in this area. Uh, Lane lives right here in Springville, done a lot of work for the community, still working today for the community and helping out. But this is Lane when he was probably about the eighth grade, seventh or eighth grade. So this is that the picture there is involved that. Uh, this building was used until 1964. January 1964 is when they uh, built the new school and they quit using the gun house as a school. And this happened in January. Uh, I remember when it happened. Uh, the second semester was starting and they got all the kids down at the old school and they marched from the old school at a parade up to the new school. And this is when the new school started up there in 19, January of 1964, when they went to the new school. Uh, the, the gun mansion or the school was torn down in 1965. It was dismantled in 1965 and uh, completely tore down. Okay, we're well, going to move on to the Boy Scouts now. The Boy Scouts in Springville actually had a troop in the 1930s. Uh, it didn't, they, they didn't last too long in the 1930s, but uh, we do have a little bit of uh, information on it. Uh, two of the leaders was in at that time. One was named Ray Allen, and the other one was named Winford Trisler. Uh, Ray Allen became a history teacher. Uh, he taught around several of the schools that, uh, around the area, in the county. Winford Trisler, I guess, was, I've never heard anyone say a, a word against Winford Trisler. He was a very person that everyone liked, uh, even though he was a principal, he was still liked. Uh, the kids really enjoyed Winford, and he let them do a lot of things and was very influential. Uh, well, okay, in 1954, the Boy Scout troop was reorganized again, and a person by the name of Howard Bird was the first scoutmaster when this troop started in 1954 again. And a person by the name of, he was there two years, a person by the name of Bob Botra followed him. And since then, there's been about 16 scoutmasters uh, since the troop's been in existence this time. people that's uh, acquainted with scouting knows that the Eagle rank is one of the highest, is the highest rank that a Boy Scout can earn. The Boy Scout Eagle rank is known even for people that's not entered, involved in scouting. Uh, people go to service and they always tell them they've uh, been in Boy Scouting and they tell me that this really makes a difference there. Some people is going in and we always tell the boys now, if you go out and seek employment after you've grown up, make sure you tell them you're an Eagle Scout. And uh, this is something that carries a, a strong impact because if anyone is in that organization that's doing the hiring and they know what an Eagle Scout is, they know that they will continue to do everything that they, they, they will follow through and they make good Boy Scout. So, and also in the recent years, uh, just recently, we had a person that actually uh, got a scholarship to help go to college because he was an Eagle Scout and he actually got the scholarship awarded to him because he has been an Eagle Scout. So an Eagle Scout is something that is really uh, very highly, uh, everyone thinks a lot of and knows what it is. Okay, a uh, number of boys has received their religious awards down through time. Uh, the Boy Scouting has awards that uh, whatever religion you're in, you can actually get a religious award in the type of religion that you're in. Uh, Catholic, Protestant, whatever it is. But you can actually earn um, a badge that says you've earned this and it's a very it's a badge that not just a lot of people can earn because it's very difficult to earn and uh, I've, I've 
several boys from Springville has earned it down through the years. The troops done a number of community projects through the years. Uh, <clears throat> they've actually helped uh, the community, the volunteer fire department. And some of the projects that the boys has done down through the years, uh, one year or a few years, uh, they went around and one mile out of Springville on all the roads, they go around picking up trash and things like this. Uh, one year in the Gray Cemetery, it has been uh, had been left alone for several years and was not in good shape. Uh, the Boy Scouts went to this cemetery, cleaned the cemetery, uh, built a fence around it, set up a gate, and made a real nice one. And that's been several years ago, and since then the Boy Scouts have been up there and cleaned it again to make sure it looks nice. And that is the Gray Cemetery where John Gray was actually buried. Uh, right now, the troop has the largest number of boys registered in scouting in Springville now than we've ever had before since scouting started. Uh, the numbers are very high now and it's very uh, under very good leadership now. And the leader right now is Alby Cross. And Alby Cross is a scoutmaster right now. Uh, he's doing an exceptionally good job and I might say that Alby was in Boy Scouting here as a troop and herself in Springville. And Alby came up through the scouting ranks here in Springville. Uh, many of the people that actually are on the board of the scouts here now actually came up through this Boy Scout program here and they've come back and helped out. Uh, I have a few items here that has been in scouting that the Boy Scouts could earn during the years, through the past three years of the Springville history and also maybe some pictures of Springville. So start out here uh, with the Boy Scout neckerchief. This is uh, many, many years the Boy Scouts could own this neckerchief here because this was a Boy Scout neckerchief. This is what it actually looked like. So that's that one. Uh, many, many years ago the Boy Scout went to a camp called Wet. Wapahani, and Wapahani was in near Bloomington, Indiana, and many, many scouts at this time went to Wapahani, and they have a lot of memories from Wapahani here. Uh, Boy Scouts can actually be in the Order of the Arrow. If you're in the Order of the Arrow, uh, Soakagagwa Lodge 212. Now that name has been changed in recent years, but a lot of the boys back in this Boy Scouting went, was in this one right here. And this is a neckerchief you could wear if you was in the Lodge, Oe Lodge. Also, if you was in the OA, you had a sash that you could wear here. And this sash looked just like this. Uh, as you can see, it, there's three steps in it, and this step here is a brotherhood step, and then it, this step, no, pardon me, ordeal is the first step, and it has the arrow. If you move to the uh, bars, just like you see here, that's the brotherhood, and then you can go on and be vigil. There's one more step above this one here. But this is what the boys can actually uh, could earn down through the years. Okay, I have a picture here of the Boy Scout troop in uh, 1971. Uh, the Boy Scouts uh, went to Camp Wapahani, and this is 1971, and many, many of these boys are still here today. Uh, it's, a, it's a great picture, and it shows what the boys actually look like in Boy Scout camp there in 1971. I would like to read an article from a court of honor from a book uh, it's a ceremony that was put on back in 1958 and uh, I picked this uh, book up and I'd just like to read this to you and the reason I'd like to read this to you is it mentions so many names of the people that you're going to know in Springville today. Uh, they were actually in Boy Scouting and, and they're adults now and so I would like to read this. A Court of Honor in 1958. Uh, it goes like this. A Court of Honor was conducted during a 1958 summer camp. July the 10th, by Boy Scout Troop 43 of Springville. Some 60 people were in attendance. Those receiving the two-year service awards were Larry Lafferty, Wilford Hardwick, Vestal Hardwick, Howard Thompson, Curtis Owens, and Paul Godsey. Uh, that's the two-year. Uh, first class awards were presented to Larry Lafferty, Howard Thompson, Wilford Hardwick, John Thompson, Dennis Godsey, and David Thompson. Okay, we move on to merit badges. We're presented to Paul Godsey, Curtis Owens, Vestal Hardwick for gardening, Kenneth Thompson, and Howard Thompson in hog and pork uh, production, uh, Kenny Thompson, and Vestal Hardwick in safety. All right, move on down. Um, four, candidate, four candidate scouts were accepted into the troop. They were Bobby Botroff, 
William Pearson, Ronald Thompson, and Jack Corsi. These were boys were accepted in there at this time. Uh, Howard Thompson was voted the most outstanding scout during the camp. Uh, the adult leaders in charge were Hobart Thompson and Larry King. <laughs>